Diablo Immortal is probably the most popular action RPG out right now on mobile and on PC, and even though it's gotten some backlash with pay to win elements, it's still an amazing game. So today, I'm giving you guys 10 reasons why you can play Diablo Immortal and enjoy it even if you're free to play. So as I just mentioned, the game has those pay to win elements. It was kind of blown up in the face of everyone that played Diablo Immortal when it just released, but I have to say, it does still offer a ton of fun for people that decide to spend zero dollars the side of the game. So let me be transparent here. I played both alphas and the beta of Diablo Immortal and throughout that time, I had spent money in the alphas and betas because I was testing out the stores. All of that money was credited back to my account. So when I got the real game, I was able to spend that money that I spent on the testing rounds inside of Diablo Immortal. So what I did was I spent about $200 that I had previously spent in the first month and a half of Diablo Immortal, bought some packs, bought some gems, and essentially I was good to go. Actually, I didn't buy gems, I bought crests, which turned into gems. Since then though, I have decided to spend almost nothing inside of the game. That's another two and a half months prior to me making this spend. In that time, I spent $5 per month, that's right, only the $5 battle pass, and I've gotten the battle pass every single month. That's all I'm spending. That's all I plan to spend moving forward. Now, why is Diablo Immortal still a great game for me only spending five bucks a month or maybe for you who doesn't want to spend anything? There is so much to do inside of the game. And if you take a little bit more of a casual approach to it and you don't need to be the best in the world in PvP and you don't need to be the best in the world on leaderboards, which let's be honest, even if you spend thousands of dollars on the game, chances of you being the best are quite slim. So if you take a casual approach, if you play all the different things that the game has to offer that I'm gonna go over inside of this video, you can really enjoy yourself and have hours of fun per day playing the game completely for free. So really, tip number one is, you know, just relax, chill, enjoy the game, play for free. Give them five bucks a month to support the game, get yourself a battle pass, enjoy Diablo Immortal, and everyone can stop complaining. Number two on today's list is the team. Diablo Immortal has a team dedicated to com continuously update the game. So they've put in stone right now, they're gonna do an update every other week. So every two weeks, we're gonna be getting an update. One is gonna be a battle pass and a new Heliquary boss, and then two weeks after that, unless of a big, huge update is on the way, we're gonna get another update with some type of events and things like that inside of the game. So when you're about to dive into a game that takes a lot of time, a lot of grind, you're gonna want something that you know the team is dedicated to. So over time, the game survives, it lasts, it's profitable, so the dev team doesn't give up on it, and one that's gonna continuously get better and grow with time. Diablo Immortal is that game. Number three is a pretty simple one. Diablo Immortal is the best action RPG out right now on mobile. I've played all of them. There are some really great games, but even the best ones, when you compare them to what Diablo Immortal has to offer, Diablo Immortal just has more. And it has more in every element. Gameplay, customization, graphics, longevity of the game. It wins hands down everywhere. Plus it's crossplay. You can play on your phone, and on your PC, sync the accounts through Battle.net and you're good to go. Number four on the list are the classes. There are six different classes inside of the game and all of them play differently. So let's go through these a little bit together. First of all, you have the Barbarian and the Crusader. You could kind of group them together as your tankier characters or your tankier heroes inside of the game. Then you have two hybrid style characters, one being the Monk, which is another melee style character, but definitely not as tanky as a barbarian or crusader, but more bouncy, jumping off the walls, doing a bunch of acrobatics that are just really a ton of fun. Then you have another hybrid character, which is the necromancer. Essentially, a necromancer is a summoner, summoning the dead, having skeletons and spawn fight alongside of you. So you could sit back from afar and let your army of the dead fight for you. And then of course we have the demon hunter, which is the highly elusive ranged character. And we have the wizard, which is the one that I'm currently playing right now on my main. And the wizard is just, you know, your typical wizard class, but in all honesty, it's an amazing class inside of the game. So no matter whether you like being up in your face ground and pound like I used to play, or an elusive demon hunter or anything in between, Diablo Immortal's got you covered. 
every single type of gameplay is covered right here. Plus, more character classes will come in the future. Now, we call Diablo Immortal an action RPG, but really it's an open world RPG. So we're talking about like a MMO RPG, a massive multiplayer online, because when you're inside of Diablo Immortal, you're encountering other real people that are in that place at the same time. When you're in Westmarch, which if you're not familiar is the main hub, your home base, there are people all over, people that you can friend, people that you can play with, people that you can have as your enemies. But it's really cool to be able to play a game and see people that are actually real people and really they're playing alongside of you inside of the game. It's just a huge new way to play. That's really not so new. I guess it's newer on mobile, but I like it. And it's a plus for Diablo Immortal. Now, since we're in this MMORPG world, it's really easy for you to play with friends. You could simply tap on a character next to you and you could chat with them. You could learn about their builds. You can go through the extensive chat system inside of the game. Talk to your world, your zone that you're in, the, the group that you're playing with at the time, your clan. Anyone that you wanna talk to, you have the ability to do this. So really socialization is amazing inside of the game. I think some of the best features are being able to just check out other characters, other people in the game, someone that's really ranked high, and you can take a look and kind of scroll through what skills are they using on their class? What class are they using? What gems do they like to use inside to modify how those skills work? It's really a fun way to get to know other people's builds, to get to know other people, and really to play alongside others so that you're not just doing this all solo. Next up is rifts. They're really fun. You could do challenge rifts where you're going against the leaderboard and you're trying to be the highest on the leaderboard, getting the biggest rewards. Remember, this is a pay to win element. If you pay, it's gonna be easier for you to get the power to climb higher. So if you're there playing as a free to play player and you just wanna play for fun, do this for fun. Do it for the rewards. Don't expect to be number one. I don't. You also have Elder Rifts, which live right next to the Challenge Rifts. And Elder Rifts are where you could put your rare crests or your legendary crests in. And even if you don't, if you go bare with no crests, you have to go through, defeat enemies to eventually spawn the end boss and take down the boss for rewards. Rare crests will get you some rewards. Legendary crests will guarantee you a legendary gem, which then you could use to either slot into your gear, to use as food to upgrade better gems, or maybe you'll get lucky and get one of the best gems in the game. So we were just talking about challenge rifts and how if you want to play for free and casually that you just play for fun. Well, PvP is along those lines as well. So PvP is the next topic. PvP is great. I think there's a lot of work to be done inside of PvP, inside of Diablo Immortal. I think that they plan on doing this stuff. I could see it evolving very much over time. PvP is in the game. Battlegrounds, we have the Echoes event. There are things in the game where you are participating in PvP. This tells me that the mechanic is inside of the game to do PvP for ranking systems, for skill-based ranking. So the players that are big ballers and the whales are gonna spend a ton of money, they'll be fighting it out up here. And free-to-play players will be hanging out in here. And people that casually play and barely log on, they'll be fighting it out down here. And everyone can have their fun in the bracket area where they are appropriately going to be placed. So we don't have to fight those whales because they're up top. And we're more in the middle of the leaderboards, crushing it over there, having some fun. PvP, if you don't take it too seriously and you just do it for enjoyment and for rewards, is awesome. Next up is character customization side of the game. Not only can you customize your character when you create it, you can make it look and do whatever you want it to do. You can give it purple hair if you want. I personally don't care about this, but a lot of people do. Alongside of this, you have the ability to class change. So if you start out as a barbarian, as I did, and you get tired of it and you wanna move on to something, you can switch to a wizard, as I did. You don't lose any of your progression, you don't lose any of your, your gems or anything like that, but you do guess placement gear in place of the gear that you had for your class. There's definitely some catching up to do once you do a class change. You have to grind your skills again, get your legendary gear again, but it adds fun to the game. I don't at all regret class changing from Barbarian, which was my, my diehard love, into a wizard, which I found out I actually love even more. So class changing, customization is awesome, but you could really also customize your character itself overall. And this is where this whole point, this 
point number nine has come from. Being able to switch out the classes, to use gems to modify the classes, to use different gear that'll modify how the skills work. There's so many ways that you can change how things work and change how your character class has been built. It really allows you to be able to customize how you attack, how you battle, and what the game feels like for you when you play. So being able to have that customization on all three of those levels is huge. I think it's a great plus for Diablo Immortal, another reason to play. And finally, free players get rewards too. When Diablo Immortal came out, a lot of hate came out about it, how it was pay to win. A lot of this hate was because you had some large streamers that were really bringing in the herds of people around it and building up the hype for something that, in my opinion, didn't have the worth of being hyped that much. Now, is it pay to win? Sure. Are hundreds of other games? Yes. But as long as we know this and we could be safe about how we spend and be smart about how we spend, if we spend it all, we're okay. So the cool thing is, I feel like Blizzard saw this and they were like, oh crap, what are we going to do now? So they've been implementing new ways for free-to-play players to get more of these legendary crests or eternal legendary crests, which the difference is legendary crests, you can't sell anything that you get from them. Eternal legendary crests, you can. So essentially you could trade them for platinum, which is great because you could spend platinum other other things. It's a premier currency inside of the game. I know I'm going off on a tangent, but because they noticed that the free-to-play players needed more love, there are more events that can get free-to-play players legendary crests, more rewards for running Elder Rifts without legendary crests. You can get runes and those runes can be turned into legendary crests for gems. So what I'm trying to say is Blizzard's listening, they realize that free-to-play players want more, and they've slowly been giving more. Do I think they're just going to give them away like hotcakes? No. But is there going to be opportunity? Yes. For example, the other day, I had three legendary crests that I got from rewards inside of the game. I ran one Elder Rift with three legendary crests, and I got myself a two out of five star Echoing Shade gem. This is a gem that I needed for upgrading my other Echoing Shade. Is a 2 out of 5 the best you can get? No, a 5 out of 5 is. But is it a rare gem and hard to get? Yes, it is. And I was very happy, very satisfied getting this gem because I got it for free from a reward for completing an event. And if I wanted to, I could have sold that thing for 50,000 50, platinum. I'm sorry. But I chose to use it because I need it. So Diablo Immortal has so many ways that we can all enjoy. I hope you guys found this video useful. Check out my videos that I pop out all of the time for you, focusing on Diablo Immortal. Subscribe and ring the bell if you're interested. Have a great day and be good.